the Cleveland Cavaliers select Evan Mobley. It's been a historical franchise in this league for years. We have a trade to announce. The Boston Celtics select Jason Tatum. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the NBA front office show. Inching closer to that trade deadline coming up on February 10th. We've got some more trade talk to get into today. Some other things going on around the league as well. Keith rocking the throwback Sonics shirt. Can't, <laughs> can't see it in the frame right now. You have to lean back a little bit to show everybody your, your Sonics basketball. There we go. Let's get basketball back in back in Seattle. I think that's a that's a must. Agreed. Yeah, hundred percent. I uh, I want it because I want a team in Seattle. Um, I don't know if I've ever mentioned this on the show or even to you before. I've always had this feeling since I was probably like fifteen or sixteen years old that I was gonna live in Seattle at some point in my life. I don't know why. I've literally Stick. nothing to base that on. Big Nirvana or, fan. And- or Starbucks? <laughs> no, no, not really. <laughs> and I have no connection to to that area either. But I've always felt that. But yeah, and and beyond that, man, I would just like the content, like the oh the, sure, the, uh, yeah, the the content of um you know expansion draft and yeah. all that stuff, man. Like uh, that'd be that'd keep me busy writing and everything because it's been so long since we've had one. I, I like people would be like, all right, explain the rules. How does this work? Who's we being protected? Get into, right. Exactly. Protected list. Who did they blow on the protected list? Why was this guy? So yeah. So I'm I'm always hopeful that will uh, that will come, <laughs> come eventually. Oops. I, I I hit it early. Well, let's just do it. Let's <laughs> a just premature it. Simmons siren. <laughs> but let's the Simmons siren. <laughs> let's get into it. This is the now big it's news. A tangential Simon Siren today, but but I hit the button by mistake, so I I blew it. But people love the Simon Siren, man. We we yeah. get a lot of comments on the Simon Siren every uh, show, and it is warranted on this one because this is the the rumor coming out now is that the 76ers are starting to talk about putting Tobias Harris in a Ben Simmons trade. Now, the first thought in my head was, oh my gosh, how much salary is going down in this <laughs> yeah. trade if you're adding Tobias Harris to it? But I also think it gives us a little bit of insight into what kind of offers the 76ers are getting right now for Ben Simmons. And it tells me they aren't getting the guy that they want. No, I, I think that is definitely true. And to answer your question, $69 million. Nice. So as a, as, as Gronk would say, nice. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's actually sixty-eight million nine hundred ninety-nine thousand eight hundred eighty-six dollars. Uh, so we'll we'll round that between friends here and call that sixty-nine million. Uh, beyond that, though, what's crazy is if the same team were to acquire them, they would be acquiring over a quarter of a billion dollars in salary oh. through the life of those two deals: two hundred and fifty-nine point six million dollars. Wow. Um, for through Simmons is uh, obviously got this year plus three years through 24, 25 mm-hmm. Harris has this year plus two years through 23, 24. So, um, and we but, should mention this is, uh, this is per Brian Windhorst and Mark Spears of, yes. of ESPN. They had this, yep. but, uh, yeah, but point. so if, if both are hearing that the 76ers want to include Tobias Harris, um, from a, a caps perspective, let's go there first. What does that mean? What's the 76ers goal here in in doing this? Yeah. So there's two things. One is maybe there is a team out there that really wants to buy Harris. Maybe Philly can take on a questionable contract their way, but one that expires sooner than either Harris or Simmons. Maybe that's, that's a way to, to do this. So the, the reality is there's no team out there that's positioned to take on $68 million, $69 million. Um, it's just not going to happen. Like they, Philly would have to take. You're talking then getting involved with the Houston Rockets and taking on John Wall's salary. Yeah. Um. I know uh, Lakers fans love to say, you know, trade them Russell Westbrook for Ben Simmons. That's not. You couldn't even do this, right? You, you'd uh, you'd be, be in a position be, where Russ they could even stuff. take both back. Yeah, it'd be Russ and stuff exactly, and that's not not going to happen. So I think you're, if you're Philly, what you're hopeful there is. Does this open up three team trade possibilities where Harris goes to one team, Simmons goes to another team, Philly takes in some from both teams? Maybe that's where where this goes. Um, 
And it's not that Tobias Harris is a bad player because he isn't. He's just a very overpaid player. He should not be on a near max contract. Um, hey, it's it, this is just Keith being nitpicky about salary stuff. Everybody refers to him as a max player. He was just under the max mm -hmm. um, when he signed, almost comically so, where it was like, why did they not just give him the max? Um, but but I digress, I'll move on. Um, so it, it really does become a situation of where are we where are you going with this? And as we look, I mean, who needs Tobias Harris? Like, there's there are teams that I think would be okay to have him. Sure, but it's where where are we going with, with that contract? And I know that a couple of people say, well, could you get something from Indiana for him? You know, could you get a couple of their players for him? I mean, maybe, but I don't see that being something they're jumping all over. And it's more. It's not really about the 36 million this year because if it was 36 million expiring, that's a whole different conversation we're having. It's about the uh, 76 plus million or almost 77 million the next two years yeah. um, that he's owed. That that's where it starts to become a tricky thing. But you asked why would Philly want to do this? Clear up the cap sheet, uh, maybe create room to make a run at James Harden and free agency. Uh, there's still a lot of people who are wondering if that's the ultimate goal here. Uh, if the Nets don't make the finals, are the Nets maybe more open to saying, all right, let's go a different direction? Do the Nets even want to hand Harden a max deal? You know, where is that, that going? And we know, obviously, Daryl Morey has a fondness and tried to trade for Harden uh, in the past. So um, that that's, that's probably the end goal here, though, is open up some more flexibility moving forward if you can move off of Harris in combination with Simmons. You know, it's interesting if you were and i'm not saying the 76ers are going to go this route but if you were to just get expirings you clear over 70 million dollars off yeah. your books off your books for next which sounds i mean just that that number sounds ridiculous mm -hmm. but next thing you know you're right there to give out you're you're close enough anyway to start talking about a max contract for a guy like James Harden, you're yep. building around a pair of Joel Embiid and James Harden. You still have Seth Curry. You still have Tyrese Max. He's only on $2.7 million next year on a, on a team option. You've got some pieces there around those guys. Cork Moss is under contract for $5 million. And looking at some of these guys, uh, Seth Curry, right? This may be your last opportunity to take advantage of some of these guys being on lower contracts. Seth Curry's probably going to get more than $8 million on his next contract. You look at some of these other players, eventually they're going to start making more. Yep. So it kind of starts lining up where it makes some sense, but it's also a gamble because if you're the 76ers and you do this and you don't get James Harden, suddenly, yes, you still have that flexibility, but it becomes a little bit less clear what the end game is. Yeah, absolutely. And let's be fair too. It, you can also use cap space in a trade. Yes. It makes making mm -hmm. trades easier, so that doesn't take you out of the running for Damian Lillard. If sure. the Trailblazers change their mind later, I, I still think that would be more likely to be a Simmons trade is how that would happen. Mm -hmm. But yeah, my I if, if I had to put a percentage on this, I'd say it's like 5% that Tobias Harris gets moved in conjunction with a Simmons trade. It just doesn't make sense. Now, we did see Shams doing some speculation, whether it was his own speculation, informed speculation, whatever, about Simmons to Atlanta. John Collins comes back. Mm -hmm. uh, could you find a third team? You know, could you could you pay Oklahoma City to take on Harris in the couple years left? Philly already did that once uh, in a now Horford trade. OKC clearly did that for Kemba Walker. Um, the problem there starts to be OKC. What are they sending back? Where are we going with with that? But I mean, you could maybe get Derek Favors back, and that's just a you know kind of a rebalancing of your books a little bit. So maybe that is the direction that this ultimately goes, and that's you know where it is. But if you bring back anything of uh, value in terms of big salary for Simmons in a trade where Harris also goes out, what ultimately happens is you end up with that cap space stream goes away. It'll yeah. dry up very, very quickly. Now, I'll also say the 76ers are on a seven-game win streak. They mm -hmm. are the five seed right now in the Eastern Conference. There's a lot of variations of this where you would kind of have to, to thread the needle, where if you were just going for pure cap space, that's kind of, that you could wind up sending the message that, hey, we're not going to make a run this season. Yeah. And I don't know if that's that's what you want to do. So then, then you're trying to thread the needle of, Okay, we want cap space, but we also want to get back in this deal expiring guys 
who could help us this season in case in case things click this season and can make a run that's that adds another layer of difficulty to trying to make a move it's not like the 76ers are clearly out of the playoff race and they're saying just give us cap room for next season and and we're good they're not in that situation so i think that complicates this even further it absolutely does and this is a weird spot because you you don't you don't have teams that are very good with a large salary that is a completely non-productive player Mm -hmm. sitting on your books very often. Every once in a while you run into the team has, you know, blah, blah, blah's expiring contract. And it's just kind of sitting there and they, they are able to move it. In this case, this is not that this is a valuable player who you can trade in Ben Simmons, bring in one player who's really good or several players who are pretty good. And, you are not sacrificing any production at all because of the fact that he's not playing for you. He's been no part of uh, what has started to turn into be a pretty good season. And I do, that is why I believe taking the Tobias Harris part, separate that, put it to the side. You have to trade Simmons because Embiid is having an MVP calendar, calendar, caliber season. And you don't know how many more of those you're going to get. There's the be, being realistic with his injury history, all the, the things that have gone against him. He's a big man. Big men don't always uh, have that long of the peaks that some of the other guys do um, in this day and age. You just have to take advantage of that when you can. So to me, that's why you have to make a Simmons trade. And I would hope, and I'm guessing Daryl Morey is uh, smart enough to not say, well, if we're doing a Simmons deal, it has to come with Tobias Harris going out as well. I don't think that's the case. My guess is it's more, hey, if we can do this and accomplish that goal as well, off we go and let's right. keep things moving. Yeah, because I do think that, that Tobias Harris, like if his salary was lower, there are lots of teams that would like him. I mean, his skill set yeah. is one that's in that's in demand around the NBA, yep. uh, even though his three-point shooting hasn't been quite what we would hope it, it would be this season. But, but yep. still, there were a lot of teams that would be very interested in him. So you just have to be, if you're just taking back, money right you're just taking back contracts guys who aren't going to do anything for you on the floor yes Simmons isn't giving you anything but if you subtract Harris without getting anything back really aside from expirings that's where you can kind of send the the wrong message there to uh to the team but uh, again we'll see where all of this goes I think it's an interesting wrinkle to this um perhaps again suggest that the 76ers aren't finding that trade for the guy that they want and so they're saying all right well if we're not going to get the guy that we want right now let's at least move some salary, move Tobias Harris. If we're going to move Ben Simmons as well, let's see if we can get that guy this summer with the cap room that we can create by this trade. So it's, and again, like you said, I wouldn't say this is the likely deal, the likely way that it's going to go down instead. I would say it's very unlikely, but interesting. And it tells us that the 76ers are are considering some alternative options aside from just, we need Damian Lillard or Bradley Beal for Ben Simmons. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. This is they're open to doing more roster uh, machinations than than I think we ever could have expected. To close the book on Tobias Harris, yes, eighteen point four points, seven point five rebounds, three point nine assists. Those all look pretty good. Yep. Till you dig in a little bit deeper, he's only shooting twenty nine point five percent from three, and that's on three point seven attempts per game. So that's that's not very good. Uh, he's getting the free throw line less than four times per game. Uh, that's basically a, a, you know in line with where he's been for his career. Um, but he's playing a career high in minutes. He's taking a near career high as best I can tell in shots per mm-hmm. game um, outside of a couple years ago. So, uh, and that was a couple years ago was when we were out saying, geez, you know, this guy maybe should be an all-star. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's your, your, your problem. This guy has a big role and he's, you know, when you're shooting that much and you're shooting under 30% from three, that starts to become a kind of destructive player um, for you versus for the opponent. So that's just something to keep in mind as we talk about where you know his game has slipped a little bit. All right. Uh, Donovan Mitchell had some more comments about the Utah Jazz. We had the story the other day about Donovan Mitchell, perhaps someday wanting to go to a big market. Again, he's under contract for a few more seasons, so we're not saying this is happening tomorrow. Sure. But he did have some pointed comments about the Utah Jazz and their defense in particular said, um, they are fooling themselves. Utah was uh, was not good last night against no. uh, against a, uh, a bad Pistons team that is missing Jeremy Grant, and they lost by 10. That's not what you would expect. 
out of the well, Utah not Jazz, only dis- that, despite they, and Rudy Gobert's out. We should note that. Sure, but they blew a twenty-two point lead. Yeah, in that game, and fell apart in that that game to a Pistons team that doesn't have Jeremy Grant. You know, is not quite frankly, they're not trying too super hard to to win games. I mean, it was bad. Their their defense was horrendous. Forty uh, to twenty-three now, in the third quarter. 40 yeah. to 23. They let up 78 what? second half points to the Pistons, Ooh. who are not a good offensive team um, at all. Nope. It's a, it want, They might have even been 30th <laughs> going into yesterday. Um, yeah, well, let's let, let's check that and see. I'll check that. Okay. Um, what I was going to say on that is uh, they were 29th, but maybe oh. 30th going into yesterday. Um, but Mitchell's a big part of that. His defense was not good either. Uh, getting blown by on the perimeter, guys, you know, beating him off the bounce and those kind of things. I think that team has become very reliant on Rudy Gobert cleaning up all the messes they make out on the perimeter. And what teams have started to do is teams are embracing the mid range mm-hmm. against um, the the Jazz now because they know they can get by that first wave. They're not necessarily going all the way to the cup to challenge Gobert because that's generally doesn't work out so great for you um so why not take and live in that mid-range a little bit more and and in the pistons did some of that and then they really get downhill to the basket because gobert wasn't there so i think i get where donovan mitchell is coming from i think his comments are all spot on but include yourself in there and maybe he was um but the reality is what's gonna how this is going to be seen by folks is hey Every single time we hear a Donovan Mitchell story, it is not good. That's going to start to make people think maybe Donovan Mitchell is more gettable than we thought he would be or something like that. My guess is with Utah, it is more of a let's get our guys back. Let's really refocus here in the second half of the season, get things back to the play in the basketball we know. And then if we flame out again in the playoffs, then it's probably time to start having bigger conversations about where are we going with this roster. And much like he's clearly far uh, earlier on the career spectrum, but it does start to become almost like Portland, Indiana, Boston to some extent. How long do you run with this kind of same core group? And, you know, if your best move forward is to trade Mitchell and really rebuild, is that the way to way to go forward? And I don't feel like it's we're not there yet with the the Utah Jazz. They're one one of the top teams in the West. This was a bad night, but they're one of the top teams. They're clearly, clearly in the top three. Um, you know, the, you, like we said, I think we said this yesterday, you win a championship this season, all of this is forgotten, right? Yep. All of this is, is completely forgotten. If, if you go and you win a championship this season, but again, for a long time, they've been known as the team that's good in the regular season, come playoff time, teams figure them out and they go home. Yeah. Um, yeah, and we'll see and if I they mean, can overcome if, that. Yeah. If they were ripped off another great regular season and went in as the one seed, we'd all be sitting there saying, okay. Cool. Yeah. Show me in the playoffs. Yep. Right. I mean, it's just the reality of the way this 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 works is we we don't really care what you do in the regular season once you've done it three or four years in a row and you're and then have not proven to be able to go further. And then it becomes all right, you're just a regular season team. And we do have more on the Pistons. We're going to get into that later today, though. Uh, Maybe interested in DeAndre Ayton. Be on the lookout for that video. That's going to be coming out a little later this afternoon. Really interesting if they do wind up making that push. So I can't wait to break that down. But let's finish off this show with uh, Real Madrid. Let's talk about, I know, not normally a team (laughs) team that we talk about. And not the soccer team. No, not the soccer team, but it does loop in your Boston Celtics a little bit here. So what, what is going on with Real Madrid and how do we link this back to the NBA? Yeah, this is not a uh, loan agreement like we see in uh, in FIBA, <laughs> um, which we, or FIFA rather. Yep. FIBA doesn't really have that involving the NBA portion. The NBA does not take part in in that. But they so a couple names people will recognize here. Uh, Real Madrid recently signed Gershon Yabasele, a uh, former first round draft pick of the Celtics, uh, to a long term deal. He's played quite well for them, uh, so they're going to keep him there. They are planning to bring back Gabriel Deck. Uh, that name probably sounds somewhat familiar. He was with Oklahoma City, uh, recently was waived as they made a kind of a salary uh, move to help the Utah Jazz um, by, by acquiring Mia Oni, uh, along with a uh, second-round draft pick. 
uh, deck headed back. Then Juancho Hernan Gomez is also on their radar. Now, this is not a right now thing because mm-hmm. it's not something that exists um, as far as those moves. But it's pretty well known. Hernan Gomez is probably going to, to have his uh, contract uh, bought or waived after this season. He's on a fully non-guaranteed deal for next year. Um, so it's highly likely that it'll be waived. I've been calling him uh, for a couple months now. He's a pseudo expiring deal because yeah. teams can acquire him. Um, and then, then it can, uh, you can waive that last year at no cost um, after the season. Um, barely plays for the Celtics. Very few, few games uh, played for them. Um, he had, kind of slipped out of the plans in Minnesota prior to being traded a couple times this off season. So something to keep an eye on uh, that, you know, we may see, see him uh, head back overseas. And this is semi related to uh, like Nikola Miritich uh, sure. went back overseas and he recently had a, a really interesting interview where he basically said, I just, didn't like the lifestyle in the NBA and in, in the United States. My my family's far more comfortable over here, overseas, and uh, I like the lifestyle and the way we play uh, over here in Europe uh, more than than I liked it in the NBA. So, yeah, you know, the NBA is not for everybody. Yeah. So it's you know that's something to always kind of keep in mind. Absolutely, got to do what's what's best for you and and your family. Uh, from the Celtics' perspective, uh, is that do you see him getting moved then? Seven million dollar salary. That's that's not that gives you something. You know that's a that's an expiring yeah. essentially that you can uh, that you can use. At the absolute very least, they're going to dump him on OKC with a pick mm-hmm. to get under to get out of the luxury tax. That's at the very least. Yeah. Now at the high end, yeah, seven million for him, five point nine million for Schroeder. That puts you in the mix to add a nice rotation player, um, you know, for the rest of the year. That's the way they go. The good news for the Celtics is, um, and yes, I just used the term good news and Celtics in the same sentence. <laughs> they are, we're a month out from the deadline. If they continue to play better, and they they have been playing better. They won four of their last six, um, despite couple sloppy losses in there they have been playing a little bit better if that continues and let's say let's say they start winning at a decent clip they've got options where they can go you can go the option of let's add to this team let's mm-hmm. move forward because they also have a they have a, a big trade exception from a fournier sign and trade of about 17 million they have a slightly smaller one of 9.7 million for tristan thompson 5.1 for kemba so they've got the ability now reminder you can add those together uh that's not how that works they have to be used individually and you can't add them with player salary either but they've got the ability to bring in players people uh, like to do that though i I see it all the time like like on twitter and stuff well okay i'm gonna add in this trade exception to this player and there you go you got it yeah oh if only it were that easy no yeah i mean Person, just personal opinion to be really cool if it could work that yeah. way because it would open up a lot more opportunity. It just does not. So, so yeah. So where we're really looking now for Boston is um, what direction do they go now if they continue to be inconsistent and look not great and like they'll be barely a playing team. Uh, if that, then you can see. All right, let's start dumping some of the salary for next to nothing for Hernan Gomez and Schroeder. Mm-hmm. Get out of the tax, and we'll we'll look to do our major maneuvering and resets in the off season. So I'll be very surprised if Hernan Gomez finishes the year with the Celtics. If 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 he's not traded because they're like, ah, we just don't want to dump the asset, and they get out of the tax another way, um, then I think they'll just waive him. Yeah. Um, or buy him out and send him on his way and let him do whatever he wants to do. He's not going to be back on that non-guaranteed uh, year next year. There's just no chance that happens. Some sort of a move coming regardless. Yeah. I mean, when one way or another, something is going to happen with him and, uh, and his deal uh, by the trade deadline. If not, then right after we'll see something yep. like that happen there. All right, everybody. I appreciate you joining us today. Make sure you do subscribe right here to the NBA Front Office YouTube channel. Don't forget to ring that notification bell. We will be back a little later today. We've got some bigs to talk about. DeAndre Ayton and already a landing spot popping up for him. Might the Suns regret not getting a deal done. Plus the latest on Miles Turner. The Orlando Magic doing some things with their front office too that we need to dive into. So we still have some topics to get to later today. So be on the lookout for that. Till then, everybody, stay safe and see ya.